many devices tricked out in titania. There's a phone for everyone. And as Android continues to expand into new screens, like on the wrist and in the car, and on TVs and connected devices, there's increased opportunity for developers to reach users, whether they're at home or on the go. Android Wear. There are now 12 partner brands with iconic watchmakers like Tag Heuer and designers like Michael Kors. Android TV. There are now millions of new Android TV devices growing rapidly with media content and games from the biggest names in the industry. Android Auto, more than 100 car models and stereos have launched, with another 100 on their way by the end of the year. And of course, Google Play. There were 65 billion installs in the last year alone. And I'm just in constant awe of all the amazing apps and services that you're creating that's fueling this. So let's talk about what's new in the platform. With the end release, we wanted to achieve a new level of product excellence. So we set about redesigning and rewriting many fundamental aspects of how the system works. Now, a lot of the features in N were inspired by users, how they use their phones, what they've told us, and how we think we can make their day-to-day -day experience better and more useful. This year, we decided to do something a little different by releasing early developer previews of the end release before Google I.O. We want to share our work in progress with you as we build it so we have more time for your feedback. Also, getting the platform out earlier means there's more time for app developers and device makers to be ready for the release later this year. The response to the end developer preview has been overwhelming. Many of you are already developing on the end preview release on a daily basis, and it's just humbling to be part of a project of this scale. So thank you for all of the feedback so far. Now, often one of the hardest parts of creating an Android release is coming up with the name. <laughs> and I have no idea why, but this year, the end dessert name is proving trickier than all of the others. So, so for the first time ever, we're going to be inviting the world to submit their ideas to www.android.com forward slash n. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we're looking forward to your input, but please don't call it Namey McName face. I should add that we all reserve the right to pick the winner. <laughs> all right. In the meantime, let's jump straight in and talk about some of the biggest changes in N around performance, security, and productivity. Let's start with performance. We've proved, improved performance in N in two key areas, graphics and runtime. In recent Android releases, we extended the OpenGL standard to bring advanced graphics capabilities, usually found on desktop and game consoles, to mobile. With N, we're making our biggest leap forward with the introduction of Vulkan. Vulkan is a modern 3D graphics API designed to give game developers direct control of the GPU to produce incredible graphics and compute performance. And we made a concerted effort to work with the industry on Vulkan, so you can use the same APIs and graphics assets and shaders on the desktop as well as mobile. Because Vulkan has a lower CPU overhead than OpenGL, game developers are able to squeeze in more effects per frame while still maintaining a high frame rate. Let's take a look at a Nexus 6P running a new version of the Need for Speed game by Electronic Arts. And there are a bunch of really nice improvements in this version, thanks to Vulkan. You'll notice the beautiful graphics and reflections and materials on the car, thanks to physically based rendering. Also check out the realistic motion blur effect, uh, which is computed for every object at the side of the road. And there's a really nice water surface effect on the road. And the shaders for these are pre-compiled ahead of time and can now run anywhere. So that's graphics performance. We've also uh, spent a lot of effort working on improving the Android runtime. First, we've made optimi major optimizations to our compiler. The compiler in N performs anything from 30 to 600% faster on major CPU benchmarks like Drystone. Second, we've added a new just-in-time or JIT compiler. And JIT comp compilation means that app installs are much faster, 75% faster in N. So now users can get up and running in your apps much more quickly. 
And also, because JIT is more selective about which methods it compiles, we're also able to reduce the amount of storage needed for app code by a full 50%. Now, unlike conventional JIT systems, the Android runtime uses profile-guided optimization to write compiled code to Flash for the next time you run the app. So this improves performance and reduces battery consumption. In summary, the new JIT compiler improves software performance, makes installs faster, and reduces the amount of storage you need for apps on your device. Let's talk about another big area of focus for us, security. We designed Android from the beginning with a multi-layered, defense-in-depth security architecture. And Android employs the latest cutting-edge security technologies, things like SE Linux, verified boot integrity, and full disk encryption. With N, we're continuing to strengthen our defenses in three key ways. First, N introduces file-based encryption. By encrypting at the file level instead of the block level, we're able to better isolate and protect individual users of the system. Second, we learned the importance last year of hardening the security of the media framework, especially since it's accessing files from anywhere on the internet. So in N, we've split out key subsystems into individual SE Linux protected uh, processes, things like codecs and file extractors. By improving the security of the media framework, we improve the security of the entire device. Third, and this is something that's really cool, N automatically keeps your phone up to date with the latest version of the system software without you having to do anything. Like Chromebooks, new Android devices built on N have two system, update, two system images. So when an update is available, your phone will automatically download the new system image in the background. So the next time you power up your phone, it will seamlessly switch into the new software image. You're no longer asked for your password when the phone powers up, thanks to file-based encryption and a new feature called Direct Boot. And that pesky Android is upgrading dialog is finally gone, thanks to the new JIT compiler. <laughs> I think the best feeling in the software industry is actually deleting code, by the way. All right. Uh, this approach to software updates is one of the most loved features of Chromebooks, and I'm really excited to bring it to mobile as well. So that's some of the ways we're improving security mechanisms in the platform. But let's not forget about all of the security services that Google provides to keep all Android devices safe. In fact, when you think about the scale of Android and Google Play and the number of devices and apps out there, we're providing one of the most comprehensive mobile security solutions in the world. Let's take a look at a few examples. Google Chrome protects users when they're surfing the web through a system called Safe Browsing. Safe Browsing warns users ahead of time when they're about to go to a site that we know contains no malware or is known to be deceptive. Today, we're protecting over 1 billion mobile Chrome users. Another example of how we protect users is through the Google Play Store. All Android apps undergo rigorous security testing before appearing on the store. We review every app to make sure it meets our policies. We also run an app security improvement program with developers to identify potential security vulnerabilities. For example, we've worked with key banking and e-commerce applications to ensure they're using HTTPS properly to protect against man-in-the-middle attacks. Google Play itself is built on a state-of-the-art cloud-based infrastructure we call SafetyNet. SafetyNet with SafetyNet, Google's expert systems and machine learning models analyze billions of signals every day to predict bad behavior. If an app steps out of line, Google Play will block or uninstall the app no matter where it was installed from. And the scale of SafetyNet is extraordinary. Every day, we, we, we test over a billion devices and over 8 billion installed apps. And all of this happens under the hood to keep you safe and secure, no matter what version of Android you're on. Let's move on. A third area of focus for us is our continued effort to improve productivity. And we've taken a close look at how people multitask on Android to understand what's working for them and where we can improve. And we've particularly focused on the recent app screen. And what we learned from our user research is that over 99% of the time, people only select an app within the last seven. 
So we decided to simplify by automatically removing apps in the list that you haven't used in a while. This then makes it much easier to find the app that you're looking for. Also, based on popular demand, we finally added a clear all button at the top. Yeah, feels good. <laughs> but my absolute favorite feature is something that we call Quick Switch. You can now flip to the previous app you're in just by double tapping the Recents button from anywhere. You can think of it like a simplified Alt tab. And it's amazingly useful in so many situations. For example, let's say I'm in a phone call and I'm trying to coordinate an event. I can flip over to the calendar app I was just in by double tapping the Recents button at the bottom right. From there, I can check my schedule and then flip back to the dialer by double tapping the Recents button again. It's pretty cool. Now, many of you have also asked for the ability to display more than one app at the same time. So we've invested a lot of effort in redesigning our window management framework in N. And we're introducing two powerful new windowing modes in this release, split screen and picture in picture. Split screen is designed for tablets and phones. And it's really simple to use. So for example, let's say I'm watching a video on YouTube to learn how to make the best nachos. I can long tap on the Recents button to enter multi-window, and from there launch something like Google Keep, for example. Now I can update my shopping list for ingredients while I'm watching the video. The second mode, Picture in Picture, is designed for Android TV. And it's a great way to let you keep watching something while you perform another task. For example, let's say I'm watching a live TV program on retro gaming, and they're talking about Pac-Man, and I want to see if I can install and play the game myself. I can put the live content into picture-in-picture -picture mode to keep watching it, and then go ahead and perform a voice search for Pac-Man. This will then give me an option to install the game from the Play Store, all at the same time as watching the content. It's pretty cool. Notifications is another area we've worked on to improve productivity in Android. And it turns out that today, over half of the notifications shown on Android originate from messaging applications. So we decided to make some changes to really optimize for this use case. We've added a new direct reply feature, which lets you quickly reply to a message like so. You no longer need to launch the app to fire off a quick response. So it's a real time saver. We've also added a feature to give you more control over notifications. With M, you can long tap a notification to change its visibility. For example, you can block notifications from a given app or set them to show only silently. So now you're able to choose which, which notifications are important for you. One other area we've worked on to improve your productivity in Android is your ability to express yourself with emoji. And Android is the first mobile platform to support the new Unicode 9 emoji standard. And <laughs> with this addition are more human-looking glyphs and support for skin tone variations. Unicode 9 also brings 72 new emoji glyphs. So now you can let your friends know, for example, when you're dancing like the left shark while juggling and eating avocado toast in order to win first prize in that selfie contest. <laughs> Basically my typical Friday night. Not. Uh, but more seriously, we're really committed to this space, and we're continuing to work with the Unicode Consortium on the next generation of uh, emoji. In particular, you may have seen some of our suggestions around better representing women in professional roles. So thank you for all the support for that so far. All right, let's wrap up. Android N is the best version of Android yet. I have to say that, but it's actually true. We've made it faster and more performance with the powerful new JIT compiler and Vulkan 3D graphics. We're continuing to, to harden our security and provide the first truly seamless software update system for mobile. And we're making users more productive with better multitasking, brand new multi-window support, and improved notifications. In fact, there are over 250 major new features in N. Everything from Java 8 language support with Lambdas to data saver, setting suggestions, and much, much more. You can check out the What's New in Android session later today to learn even more. We're still putting the final touches on the end release, and we expect to launch it later this summer. But if you can't wait until then, I'm happy today to announce that we're publishing our first beta quality release candidate for you to try out on your main phone or tablet.
you'll be able to opt into the new beta program at www.android.com forward slash beta and run N on your Nexus 6, 9, 5X, 6P, Nexus player, and Pixel C. Now, there's one more area in N that we've been working hard on that we haven't talked about yet. And to tell you more about what it is and how it fits into our bigger plans, let me invite up Clay Bavor. Thank you.